Africa. We were better off than they were. We were better governed. Before they came to Africa, there were no prisons. There were no death penalties. Have you ever seen an ancient prison built by an African king or African leader? So they have nothing to teach us about democracy or administration. In fact, let them mind their own business. We mind our own business. Partnership, yes, but partnership based on respect. If they still think that we are slaves and they are masters, they are wrong in the Gambia, and I'm not going to compromise. But Mr. President, today's youth here in the Gambia, many of whom are unemployed, when they wonder why they're in that situation, they won't be pointing their fingers at the IMF, World Bank, the EU. Surely they'll be pointing their finger to you and say, Mr. President, where's my job? Well, even the Almighty Allah, who has everything, could have made everybody a wealthy person. But if you sit down and do nothing, obviously you'll be poor. Uh, and due to Western propaganda about African governments, they blame youth unemployment on the governments of the day. Tell me one Western country where there's no youth unemployment. For the Gambia, I can defend myself because I have built more schools than the British would have built in a million years of colonizing the Gambia. I have made education virtually free, including university education. From 94 to date, I have sponsored more than 250,000 students, irrespective of their polit the political affiliation of their parents. And I'm making education accessible to even the son of a fisherman. That is what I can do, give you the skills, give you the tools. Now, if you sit down and think that you cannot be dirty because you are important, then it's up to you. I could have sat down and said, I will not lack food, but that will not take my country forward. And that's why I, I want Afri everybody to be dignified. But unemployment is everywhere. So let them not point fingers at us. And of course, 400 years of exploitation. What do we expect in 50 years for us to do? However, Mr. President, your critics, both in the Gambia and outside, even both God, Gambian even God has critics. and Western, oh, yeah, I, say that although you have a program and agenda, your people are not truly free. They can't criticize you publicly. They can't run their own media. You still believe in the death penalty. If one is a homosexual, they have to flee the country. And they say that tarnishes your record. What do you say? I don't care what they say. Africans have never been homosexual. We have never seen homosexual frogs. I have cattle, I've never seen homosexual gay cattle. And homosexuality is, a, is detrimental to human existence. It's un-African, it's unethical, it's ungodly. Go to the Bible and the Quran. We are Muslims and we believe in the Almighty Allah and what he says. Whatever Allah says is haram, we will make sure it's haram to the letter. I don't care what they feel about me. I didn't introduce the death penalty here. I found it here. And the British brought the death penalty to the Gambia. Before colonialism, there was no death penalty in Africa. Don't you know that? Go to history. But it's also said now, that... Now who? It is also said, uh -huh. Mr. President, yeah. that it was the colonials who brought in the laws against homosexuality into Africa, and Africans have maintained and kept those laws. So to be truly African would to be to remove those laws forbidding homosexuality and to remove the death are you, penalty. Are you attributing that homosexuality is African? There are some Africans who say so. Uh, yeah. Now, in, in the slave trade, doesn't Africans get captured people in the bush? So those, those are the same type of Africans that we still have that they use against us. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but homosexuality is un-African. And I, let me also make it very clear. Even if the whole world accept it, I, I, Jamie, will not accept it in the Gambia. They, let them go and tell me whatever they want to tell. Do I care? I don't. What I care about is how Almighty Allah sees me. I'm a Muslim. If I die, none of them can take me to hell or heaven. But it's the Almighty Allah who will take me to wherever he decides. And homosexuality would never be accepted in this country. They can call me any name. Do I care? I don't. Imagine, Mr. President, if you knew somebody, thought they were talented and they were even related to you, and that person presented themselves as a homosexual, said, I can't help it, it's how I was made, would you still condemn them or would you say, I must be merciful, munificent, beneficent? What would you say? In applying the law, I have no relative. I have sworn to the Holy Quran 
that I will do my duties without fear or favor, ill will or affection. And I say, help me, God. I didn't say, help me, relative. And I didn't say that, except my relative. I have sworn to uphold the laws and the constitution of this country to the letter, irrespective of who is involved. I have an operation called Operation No Compromise Against Corruption. I've sent people, of, uh, some of my brothers to jail for that. I don't compromise. I don't have one set of rules for the whole country and one set of rules for my family because we are all gamers. I'm not even above the law of the Almighty Allah. So, oh, I'll be very happy to see a relative and I will set an example. I have no Thank example. Either. But there are many, many Gambians. Gambia has a no, good, no. strong diaspora yes. in the States, in the UK, elsewhere. Some of them say they can't come home while you are president because they feel they will be detained because they've been in opposition, because they have a different notion of how the Gambia should develop. What would you say to those people? They are not in the Gambia, right? They're outside. They're outside the Gambia. And they say they are afraid of coming. But there are thousands of Gambians also who come here every December to, to celebrate uh, New Year and whatever. Thousands of Gambians in the diaspora. Those who commit offenses have no place in this country. And let me make it very clear. Let me make it very clear. You have about two million Gambians. And if you want me to sacrifice those two million Gambians, their well-being and their security and stability in this country, I will not. Yes, that's my philosophy. Yes. So they can stay there. They, they, why, in fact, why would they want to come to the Gambia if they think that where they are, they are free? Let them practice whatever they want. Okay? And most of those people are not, they have denounced their Gambian citizenship. Now, those Western countries want to use them against my country to destabilize this country, they will find me here. And that's why they are afraid of coming to this country. Mr. President, you are known to be a devout Muslim. And Islam is very strong across Africa. But we have presentations of Islam in parts of Nigeria, other parts of uh, West Africa, and even in Somalia, which some find extremely terrifying and frightening. What would you say to those people who believe their jihad is one of bombing and killing? They are not Muslims. They are just criminals. They are a disaster to humanity, they are an insult to Islam, and they should be wiped out. We're talking about the likes of Boko Haram, All Shabab. of them, ISIL, they are all horrible agents of the West created to, give, to tarnish the image of Islam. The Prophet wasallam, conducted his jihad. He never burnt down one church. Remember, the churches were there before the Prophet wasallam, before Islam. He never killed the Jews. He only fought those who fought against him as he was preaching. And those who repented, those captured and say, La ilaha illallah, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah, they were released. These people, should people that are say, La ilaha illallah, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm a Muslim like you, for the sake of Allah and the Prophet, let me go. They execute people in cold blood. These are cold-blooded murderers that have to be wiped out. They have nothing to do with Islam. So what type of jihad are these people talking about? They are false. They are criminals. And we will not tolerate them in the Gambia. And Mr. President, this is my second time in the Gambia and I see a country where a Muslim and Christian are in harmony. How do you maintain that given that not too far away there are all kinds of extremists who are looking for a new home? Well, Gambia would be the wrong place for extremists. We practice pure Islam. If there's anything that we call fundamentalist Islam, is us, the Gambians, which says absolute peace and stability, submission to the will of Allah. If you are a true Muslim and you submit to the will of Allah, you will accept human diversity because the Almighty Allah created us like that. If you come in December, you think that the whole country is, is, is Christian. You come during the month of Ramadan, you think that the whole country is Muslim. This is what we believe in living in peace according to the teachings of the Holy Quran. So they, if they are looking for a new home, Gambia is certainly off limits. We don't believe in hate, that is not a religion. We don't believe in killing innocent people at the market or bombing people in a mosque and you call yourself a Muslim? Not even in a church. Killing innocent people, they didn't say killing innocent Muslims, they say killing innocent people is haram. What are people going to a marketplace how what have they done wrong? School children, what have they done wrong? This is political, it has nothing to do with Islam. Until recently, people both 
in Africa and outside were saying Africa is rising, the continent is being uplifted. But because of what has happened this year with the Ebola crisis, they're saying maybe this rise wasn't quite so robust, quite so strong. Where do you think Africa is at this point? Well, there are powerful forces that want to see Africa fall instead of rise. And everybody is talking about Africa rising, and by the grace of the Almighty Allah, the rise of Africa cannot be stopped. But they do everything possible to make sure that each time you go forward, they, they bring us down. When Africa was so prosperous and they were so poor, they came and colonized us for 400 years and reversed our advancement. But this time around, whatever they do, they bring Ebola or any other virus, Africa is going to rise because that's what the Almighty Allah say, and we are going to rise up. So most of what they're talking about is even propaganda. Because look at how interesting it is. The origin of Ebola is then Zaire. DRC is the, one of the richest countries in natural resources. And then you look at West Africa, where it started Guinea. Guinea is West, uh, West Africa's equivalent of DRC. Sierra Leone, diamonds, Liberia. So how is it possible that Ebola is only targeting mineral-rich African countries? There is somebody behind the virus. But also, it is very clear because this time around they got it wrong. You know why? Allah exposed them. How is it possible that whites, when they have Ebola, they are cured and Africans die like dogs? So this is the question I want to ask Africans. Africa will rise it whether the West like it or not. But we, the leaders of Africa, have to wake up. It's a question of leadership. President Yaya Jame of the Republic of the Gambia, thank you very much indeed for joining us on this edition of Face to Face from the Gambia. I'm Henry Bonsu. Thank you for joining us and keep on watching Press TV.